I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Welcome to Guitars and Gear. We have a special guest joining us and a big announcement today. We have Jackson Audio joining the uh, Sweetwater family. Yes. We have Brad Jackson with us, man. It's yeah. great to have you here. Thank you so much for having us. It's, yeah. it's a huge pleasure to be here. It's, uh, I told the sales team today it's just a dream come true. So it's it's just the best thing ever for us. That's so awesome. Yeah. And yeah. so you've got the pedals here. We're going to take a tour through uh, some of the offerings you have. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and talk about that as well. But tell us a little bit about the company. There's a, there's a Hillsong connection, right? Well, yeah, there is. Okay, so... The company actually goes back to 2005. We started with Jackson Amp Works, mm -hmm. doing boutique amps, and we did that for 11 years and built a really great business. And about 2016, we just knew we needed to pivot because we could sense the change in the market because uh, so much of the new technology, like Kempers and the Line 6 Helix and that kind of stuff, it really started to shift our market quite a bit for us. So we pivoted and we uh, thought, thought, okay, we've got to do pedals just to kind of stay in the market. Um, but it never felt right for us just to do a Jackson Amp Works version of pedals. We thought if we're going to go full bore on this thing and make it make it work, we have to show total commitment to this. So we actually started a completely separate company from the ground up, mm -hmm. um, new management, everything else, and just we went for it. Just so people know we're very serious about this. And part of that was the Hillsong connection because we've worked with Nigel Hendroff from Hillsong Church for... 10 years, he's a dear friend of ours, mm -hmm. and he is the pedal guy in the whole Christian market. So right. our amps were really big in the Christian market, so we knew we'd have influence in the market as well. So we thought, okay, let's bring Nigel along. He's a dear friend. He's got golden ears. I trust his instincts, and that was possibly the smartest thing I've ever done in my life is bringing Nigel on board. So right. he is a part owner of the company. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, that's that's very cool because you yeah. have that direct connection. Yep. I mean, obviously, you do anyway, but yeah. but there's that extra like, direct <laughs> connection, well, if we, you will, to what's happening. Between here. my business partner Juan and I, we literally refer to him as Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Like he's like the guy. Like he's like the, the most high profile artist we could bring into this business. So uh, more than just an endorser, he's actually a part owner of the business. So he's family to us in every way. Right, yeah. right. So one of the big challenges uh, in the pedal market today is that there are so many pedals, and finding right. your own voice and your own direction is a very important thing, which, which you guys have done. Talk a little bit about that, how you establish the direction you're going in and what you're going for. Okay, that's, that's a great question. Um, when we st All these things were getting fleshed out in 2006 before we launched the company. We thought, um, we've, got to, we've got to find our niche, just as you said, and we try to find the niche somewhere between very simple vintage-style pedals and some of the more modern, like I always think about Chase Bliss. Joel is an absolutely brilliant human being. Um, but we try to find somewhere in the middle, you know, because I want to I want to find that that sweet spot where we have technical, like it's technical, but it's also very accessible. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's huge for me. Um, and we've always said, if Steve Jobs were alive, what kind of pedals would he make? Right. And that's, that is the guiding light behind everything we do. Hmm. So if you notice when you buy an iPhone, there's no manual. It's just intuitive. And that's the way we are. Um, it should be intuitive. It should sound good when all the knobs are 12 o'clock and you should be able to make it work. But mm -hmm. if you want to get nerdy with it, then yeah, you can look at the manual and like, oh, it does that. I didn't know it did that. Or there's trimmers or dip switches inside. So it's, like I said, technical, but very accessible. Right, yeah. right. Do you uh, approach the design for the pedals for a particular style, a particular genre, or for use with a particular amplifier? Or how no. Do you, how do you voice them? Honestly, well, initially, initially the, the prism was my idea. But almost every product since then has come to me by way of someone saying, hey, wouldn't it be cool if? And those are the golden words. If you'll take those words seriously, right. it'll guide all your products. Like the Bloom, for instance, our second product. I have a dear buddy. He plays for Winona and the Dixie Chicks. He's just a fantastic guitar player. He said, can you make me a pedal that has a compressor, an EQ, and a boost in it? And that's the only pedal I will ever need. Right. And we did it. And it's the Bloom, and it's, it's just phenomenal. Right. So... We listen to our artists, we listen to our customers, and they will tell you what to do if you just listen to them. Because mm -hmm. I don't have all the best ideas. The guys on the front lines, you know, gigging, they'll tell you if you just listen to them. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you mentioned a couple of the pedals there, and since we have the pedals yes. here, we'll, yeah. we'll go back and talk about some other things after. But okay. why don't we take a tour of what we're, we're looking at here? Okay. Where would you like to start? Let's just, well, why don't we start closest to me? You've just been okay. point the, to it. It's the broken the, arrow. Yeah, the broken arrow. <laughs> okay, so that is an overdrive. It's based on a tube screamer kind of circuit. But what I did was to make it a little bit different, we put a three-band active EQ in it. So it doesn't have the mid-hump unless you want it to have the mid-hump. Hmm. And you can certainly exaggerate that and have it be all mid-hump or just it can get really crazy because of the active EQ. Now, there's something that's cool. On the drive side of that pedal, you have four clipping diode options where you can change up how the, the overdrive clips and feels. But I've used pedals in the past that have that feature, 
And the thing that really bothered me about that was that as you're changing clipping diodes, your level's bouncing all over the place. So I put a level matching circuit in there. So hmm. as you're changing it, as you're changing clipping diodes, it's changing the output of that stage. Nice. So, um, and another reason for that is because the pedal is controllable via MIDI, I don't want to have my customers switching through options and then having to readjust their level because they switched an option. So that's one of the things we did to kind of freshen up that approach to clipping diodes. So if you take that gain control and you go wide open with it and you press on both foot switches simultaneously, it activates a feature called gain cycle where it will, it will increment the gain in 25% increments. So if you start out here at 100% gain, hit the, both foot switches together, it'll go to 25% gain of wherever that is. Mm -hmm. Hit it again, 50% gain of wherever the gain knob is, 75%, and finally 100. So it's a cycle of 25% increases. And the reason is, I'm sure you've done this, where you're playing a gig and you're trying to adjust the knob with your foot or something. Right, it's right. that thing we used to do as, as kids. I got sick of that. That doesn't make sense to me anymore. So let's, let's try to find a way to, to kind of bring an old idea into the future. So with gain cycle, you can increase the gain on the fly. And of course, that's controllable via MIDI as well. Mm -hmm. So What else can be controlled via MIDI? Okay, you turn everything off and on with MIDI. You turn off your drive and your boost. Uh, all the clipping diode options we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. that's all MIDI. The gain cycle is all MIDI. On the boost side, I have four EQ settings for that boost. And the reason being is because if you put too much low end, if you shove too much low end from a boost into an overdrive, it just kind of flubs it up and right. it's really indistinct. So I give you four different EQ settings on the boost so you can kind of tailor how hard you're pushing that overdrive or what frequencies are really getting accentuated. And of course, those four settings are MIDI controllable as well. Nice. Yeah, so that's the Broken Arrow. It's a great product. It's just, it's just kind of the, me taking a Tube Screamer to the logical to the, extreme. Right, right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. So you mentioned the Bloom earlier, yes, but uh, give us a little more of a tour of what that does. Okay, the Bloom is what I call a cornerstone product. And we call it that because it's the, a great foundation for a really great rig. Uh, it's an optical compressor, it's an active EQ, and a boost. So you can do mm -hmm. a lot of tonal shaping with that pedal. We, did, we went with an optical compressor because I think they're really natural sounding. They're not overbearing. Like some, some like maybe the Dynacomp, if you don't use it right, can be really overbearing. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a great sound, but I wanted something more Ref, just more subtle, okay. Because there's a lot of guys that say they don't like compression because that's all they've ever experienced is a Dynacomp. But you give them an optical compressor and they think it just sounds better. They don't, they can't tell you why, but it just sounds better. Right. That's okay. the Bloom. Okay. So in uh, just breaking it down, you know, the different circuits: compression, EQ, and boost. On the compressor side of the world, there are six presets of the compression, and the way I think of it. As a, as a guitar player, is I don't think necessarily ratios, release times, attack times. I think genres of music. So the first preset is just a really super fast attack, so it's almost like a limiter. The okay. second preset we call it country mode. It's just a great all-purpose compressor. The third mode is like an R&B, a little bit slower attack, so it just has a good squish to it. The fourth mode, we call it uh, ballad mode. Like if you're playing something like John Mayer's Gravity, just a real slow squish. Mm -hmm. It works perfect for that. Now, the fifth preset is where things get really crazy because what, we, what you can't see there is there is an internal compressor inside that, that pedal. There's two compressors. So when you activate the fifth preset mode, we call it slide mode, and it runs two compressors in series with, it, with themselves. And it's the old Lowell George little right, feet right. trick. And that, that say, is yeah. a really hip sound. Very cool. So we did that for a buddy of ours. His name is Joey Landreth. He's a great friend of mm -hmm. ours. And so we did that very specifically for him, and he's, he's loving it. Nice. Okay, in the sixth mode... Um, I mentioned that the internal compressor that you don't have access to, that's just that. Okay. So uh, there's no external controls to it. It's just there because, well, frankly, it's there. Why not go ahead and let you have it? Yeah, sure. So anyway, that's kind of the quick overview of the, the compressor. The EQ is phenomenal. It's a really sweetly voiced EQ. And we did that for guys that backline amps. Because like, I've been in situations where they give you a backline amp and it's just horrible. Right. And you've got to try to find a way to make your rig sound like you again. So if I give you a really aggressive EQ, you can take an old twin and make it sound like your Vox or whatever it is you're used to playing. So it's just a it's just a like a Swiss Army knife, kind of a first aid kit for your tone. Nice. And finally, the boost. It's a MOSFET boost. It's a real natural amp sounding you know boost, um, which by itself is you know that's pretty standard stuff. But I did something kind of cool with it, the slide preset mode. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to use your boost, you can certainly turn it off and on. But what I did is I figured out a way to press and hold the boost foot switch 
and the boost will slowly ramp up from unit of gain up to wherever you have it set. So uh -huh. I've got a buddy of mine who plays with Jackson Brown. He says he uses that every night. He'll hold out a slide part and just press and hold on it, and it goes, it just takes off and starts singing. Right. It's just a really fun thing for, you don't have to be a slide player, but it's just right. a great dynamic effect. So right. That's very cool. That is the bloom. It's just, it's just a phenomenal pedal. It's done so well for us. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. And Golden Boy is next. The one that looks different. <laughs> yes, Golden Boy. Okay, so <laughs> I talked about Joey Landreth earlier. Yep. Um, he came to me and said, Brad, I love your Broken Arrow. It's a great pedal. I love all the features and how it works, but I'm not a Tube Screamer guy. He said, can you make me one that's like a King of Tone or a Bluesbreaker type circuit? So we took it to heart and said, okay, we'll, we'll give it a go. And we, we released this one at the last Winter Nam. And I had never played a King of Tone in my life before that, and I played it with a Strat. It's an old twin. I thought, that is John Mayer in a box, man. So it's such a great sounding pedal. So Nice. Um, the reason we call it Golden Boy is because Joey's from Winnipeg. And on top of the, the Capitol building in Winnipeg, there's a big golden statue called Golden Boy. So it's an homage back to his hometown. There you so, go. But it has all the same features we talked about earlier in the Broken Arrow, the clipping stuff, the gain cycle, all that kind of stuff. It's just revoiced for the, the Blues Breaker circuit. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And what do we have next? I can't see with the... Uh, oh, the, the prism. prism. prism yeah, the prism that. is... The, that's the one that got us to the dance. Mm -hmm. We came out that in 2016. And... W that was an era where there's so many different boost pedals on the market that I could, there was, I have a clean boost, I want a dirty boost, I want a treble booster. There's so many different boosts on the market. What I wanted to do is have one boost to rule them all. And so on the right side of the pedal, you have a little three position micro switch and it lets you select three completely different circuits of boost. They're, they're all relay controlled, so they're completely discrete circuits. Um, transparent boost, an amp like boost, and we call it color mode, that's the third boost. And color mode is like the old vintage treble boosters that Clapton used back in the day. I'm a huge fan of that sound. So I wanted to have kind of a super vintage, super modern kind of a vibe. So mm -hmm. um, that's the circuits we have. On the left side of the pedal, you're going to see three, a little three position switch. That's your pre-gain switch, low, medium, and high pre-gain settings. So you can drive that transistor even harder. And all of that is controlled by the knob on the middle. That's your master volume that controls everything. So um, in addition to that, we have an active Baxandel EQ. So bass and treble frequencies are controlled there. Um, guys use this pedal as an always-on, mm -hmm. like a tone sculptor or tone shaper. That's how I use it. So um, my best example is this. I would play at church, and I, one weekend I'd feel like using a telly. Well, the next weekend I feel like using a Les Paul. I wouldn't mess with my board. I would just adjust the EQ on the prism because it's my always-on pedal, and my whole rig changes now with the adjustment of one pedal. So right. that's how I use it. Right, very cool. Yeah, well, super versatile. Thank you. And moving along the line, yes, uh, we have the uh, Bell Star is next up. Yeah, the Bell Star is a product that came to us uh, by way of Drew Shirley from the band Switchfoot. He's a good friend of ours. We've known him for a long time. And we were looking for a signature pedal to, to, to do with him. And he said, hey, I, I, I use 8-watt amps, little tiny Supros, the old vintage tiny amps. That's his overdrive sound. And you wouldn't think that would be his overdrive sound because it's such a huge sound. But he's one of those guys that's figured it out. Like right. the biggest sounds come from the smallest little speakers. So we made him an overdrive that sounds like that. It's not what you'd call high gain overdrive, but it's got that push and that, that aggressiveness that the tiny amp that's about to explode has. Hmm. That's, nice. a, that's just, it's just the most fun pedal. It's so musical. It's just, it's phenomenal. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah there's a whole thing to playing a small amp, isn't there? It's a thing, man. Right. That guy, he owns that sound. That is his thing. Second to the, uh, second to uh, my left, I guess, would be the uh, Blossom pedal. Yes. Okay. Remember on when I was talking about the Bloom, the country mode, mm -hmm. that's by far people's favorite mode, it seems like, of the Bloom pedal. So we just took it and just pulled that out and made it its own tiny little discrete pedal. Hmm. Uh, we just kind of took the best of the Bloom and put it there. And we just did it because the Bloom is 329. And if you're a guy that just needs a really great optical compressor but doesn't need an EQ and an additional boost, you just need a great workhorse pedal. Well, then the, the Blossom is perfect for you. It's a great optical compressor, 199 It's just, it's a great pedal for the, nice. for the value. Nice, so you're just taking that compressor circuit completely Exactly, out. and we've got it just as small as you can make it so you can like keep your board ultra tiny. Right, very yeah. nice, very nice. And, and what's our, our last but not least pedal? Okay, the amp mode. I have, I have a huge love affair with this pedal. It's just dead simple, but it's just got, it's got the mojo to it. You put it in front of a, a Vox or something, and it just sings. 
and it's the amp mode from the prism we talked about earlier. It's that circuit that people seem to love so much. We did the same thing we did with the Blossom. We just took that favorite circuit out, made it its own thing. It's 189, as tiny as possible. Nice. It's just a great, I mean, if you had it on your board, you would just never turn it off. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That is so cool. Man, it's, it's such a, uh, we'll say it's a colorful array because, mm -hmm. man, there's so many different tones and colors and sounds that you can get out of these, these different pedals. Is it the kind of thing where, where someone would get just one of them, or do you, do you find people with a board that they're lining these up and having those different options available to them? Yeah, I think people stack them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, we always say that if you see a guy, a church player with a huge pedal board, you're more than likely going to see a prism on his rig. It's just kind of that workhorse product. But definitely, I mean, I could take that the amp mode and stack it with any of the pedals on the on there, and you could make a whole new thing with it. So um, the way they stack together, especially like they, the amp mode with the Bell Star, I see that a lot. That's right. a great voice. Right. Yeah. Right. Very cool. So how long does it take for you to come up with a pedal like the Broken Arrow? That had to be a, a deep that was project. It, that was a feed of engineering. Yeah. That was. I mean, I probably spent like at least six months on that one. But I've got a, a pedal that we're just kind of talking to you guys about. It's not displayed here. It's been almost three years in the works hmm. because I'm just that way. Unless it's absolutely show-stoppingly wonderful, I won't release it. It has to be perfect. Right. So, and, and thankfully, we have the manufacturing abilities in our shop to to work to do our own circuit boards, to do our own you know sheet metal work. It's all in house for us. And because I have the option to make it perfect, we do, and we'll we'll take our time until it's perfect. And that all that stuff comes to me from the amp world because I spent so much time building thousands of amps and getting everyone just right. Um, it's not within me to release a product that's not right. So right. If my name's on it, it has to be awesome. Right, right. That, that is a very cool thing that you, you uh, come to it from the amplifier side because a lot of times amps don't work great with pedals, pedals right. don't work great with certain right. amps or whatever, but obviously you've seen both sides of that whole equation. I have, yeah. I've spent, I mean, I spent 20 years learning how to build amps and just geeking out over every scrap of information I can find. And all of that research and development informs what we're doing now. So mm -hmm. I take that whole mindset and that quality approach and that durability. Like if you pick up any of these pedals, they're stainless steel. They're, you could use it as a weapon. They're right. so overbuilt, which I think is just enough. Right. So I take all the amp stuff that we did for years and I apply it to this. And hopefully it's a product that will serve you and your children well. Right, right. That's awesome. Man, Brad, c congratulations. I mean, just such Thank a you. cool lineup of pedals, and uh, man, they just sound awesome, and they Thank offer you. so many possibilities for players. That's uh, just so excited to have you here at Sweetwater. Thank you. It's an absolute dream come true for us to be here. And I don't know how you find the time, because you're also a pilot. I you am. You've got all these other things going on, man. You're well, doing a yeah, lot of stuff. I, I, I'm the kind of personality I need to do a couple things. I right. need to do the left brain, right brain stuff. So I'll go fly, <laughs> and then I'll come home, and I'll work on software, or I'll work on a circuit board. It keeps me really happy and balanced to be able to do two different things at once. So that's just the way I've always been. And I have to give my vice president, Juan, credit. He is the rock that holds the ship together. He's the perfect business partner for this kind of stuff. So if I didn't have someone like that taking care of business and making sure stuff gets done, I couldn't go do that kind of stuff. Right, So right. That's cool. it, takes a, it takes all of us to make this thing work. And I'm blessed to have the best team in the industry. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, we're, we're so happy to have you part of the team here at Sweetwater Thank as well. You. So what, yeah. a, what a cool partnership, and we're just looking forward to having the pedals here. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for taking time to sit down always, with us today. I know you, were, you were showing them off to the sales engineers this morning, and you had yeah. Mark Leteri here playing oh some things. Oh, my gosh. We had Mark Leteri from Snarky Puppy come in and help us demo. And yeah, yeah, that was humbling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great player, and, and obviously the pedals sound great with him playing it, but with anybody plugging in, these they are going to sound awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate so, that. Absolutely. Thanks again. Good to see you. Thanks, Mitch. And thank you for joining us here for Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. We're so excited to have Jackson Audio join us. The pedals are great. You're definitely going to want to check these out. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. <laughs>